My name is Micah Jones. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at Lewis Gale Hospital. Uh, I subspecialize in adult hand and upper extremity, as well as I do all the pediatric hand and upper extremity for the hospital and the surrounding areas. So one misconception in the, the medical world is a jammed finger, okay? The jammed finger is something that should not be ignored. A lot of coaches, gym teachers, teachers or parents will say, oh, your finger's just jammed, just pull it out. But in my experience and with my subspecialty training, we see that quite often. And so a jammed finger is usually much more than a jammed finger. It's usually some type of injury to a ligament or a bone. And I have some examples here on the computer I'd like to show you. So this picture just happens to show a ball hitting a finger. This structure here is called the volar plate. And the volar plate is a very important ligament in the finger and it's a very undiagnosed or misdiagnosed injury to the finger. And if I pull up this x-ray, it will show you how an injury to the volar plate is quite often missed. If you zoom in here and look at this tiny fleck of bone right here, that's typically what is injured in a jammed finger. A jammed finger is usually a ligament injury and this ligament is so stout and strong that it pulls off a piece of bone because the ligament is so strong. And so even though you think the finger is not injured, it's usually some type of fracture or a ligament injury. So that's something that quite often gets missed. A lot of these injuries do not require a surgery if they're caught in time. So if I diagnose it in time, I can usually avoid the patient needing a surgery for this particular injury. If the finger is uh, splinted in a wrong position or if it's immobilized for too long, then the finger gets stiff and then that becomes a problem that is a lot harder to correct. Um, I'll give you one more example of an x-ray that would require a surgery. This particular injury is much more severe than the first extra that you saw. This also could be happening from a jammed finger, but usually it's more forceful. And so what's happened here is the end of this bone has been driven into this bone. And so you have multiple areas of fractures. And so this would require a surgery. You don't want to ignore the jammed finger. If there's swelling, if there's tenderness, bruising, anything of those sorts, you really should have it seen by someone like me or a subspecialty with, with hand surgery because it's usually something that's injured that should not be ignored. Um, I find that urgent cares, ERs, they splint fingers, but they usually splint them in ways that, that protect the finger for too long and too many joints are being immobilized. So it creates stiffness, which is creating more problems as opposed to helping the finger get better. Typically in a non-surgical jammed finger, if it's just a ligament injury, usually I splint those for about three weeks maximum. You don't want to immobilize a finger for more than three weeks because it causes stiffness. So after I immobilize it and get it to heal where it's stable, then we start usually buddy taping the fingers together and start motion right away to avoid the stiffness. Children in general with jammed fingers don't usually require therapy. Uh, adults that injure their fingers typically do require it there because our fingers get a lot stiffer than children's fingers do. When a child injures their finger and jams their finger, if they have a ligament injury, it usually requires about four weeks at minimum before they go back to sports or gym.